What is up, everybody? Josh here again, and today we have an Icarus Week 68 update. This week they had some performance improvements, and they explain those in detail. Let's get into it, shall we? Week 68 performance progress. Icarus Week 68 performance improvements across the board. Improvements to the UI and animal AI feature in our across the board performance improvements. Week 68 update is here and it comes with a batch of performance improvements that has been championed by their dedicated performance team and tested by their community. Improvements to memory, stutters, and garbage collection and engine performance are core focuses this week and you can read in more detail about these changes of performance down below. Let's jump in and have a read. So performance improvements. As mentioned last week, their dedicated performance team has been working busy in areas of Icarus where they can do optimizations, which is engine performance, game systems, memory, stutters, garbage collection, and connection. This week's fixes fall under memory, stutters, garbage collection, and engine performance. And guys, they go on to explain several items as far as what they have changed on down through here. Some of these you may or may not really understand. For example, fix the use case where UI pop-ups are waiting for a valid UI on dedicated servers and dedicated servers never have a UI. May not know what that means. Or may talent tree share a pull of pop-ups rather than each having its own. This has a significant impact on load times when changing maps. On average about 5 seconds faster and has an effect when moving from the character select hab and prospect. So if you're interested you can read those in the link that we post in the description down below for this update. And part of this week's optimization patch has been focused on reducing the performance costs of animals and their AI. And they break it down into three categories, processing the animal's AI, updating them, and updating their collisions. They go on to explain about when an animal moves and their colliders, and how much CPU usage it impacts your computer. But hopefully with their changes this week, they have made that better. And they hope this explanation gives you some insight into the details of their ongoing performance optimization. So we're actually going to go into the game and do some testing and see how our frames are. We're going to have our frames in the top right hand corner over here. If you're interested in what kind of frames per second we're getting. This is going to be our baseline display settings. As you can see, we're going with the full epic overall, basically the epic overall preset. And we'll scroll down the bottom. You can see what settings we have here. And we are on DLSS. We're going to be doing quality DLSS with 1.0 sharpness. And we're going to turn NVIDIA Reflex Low Latency on with Boost. We will be doing some ray tracing as well. But we'll turn that on whenever we do so. And it looks like in menus you're about 90 to 95 to 100 FPS. And we're going to check this out and see what our FPS is. And see what the all burning question is. Is it better now or not? So with the settings it looks like we are getting about 45 to 50 FPS. And the forest here. And this is without RTX. And it looks like with RTX on, we get about a 25 to 27 FPS, unfortunately. Uh, it looks like RTX is still not that greatly optimized. I do play other games quite smoothly with a very high frame rate with RTX. Unfortunately, not this one. So, uh, looks like we're going down into even 9s and 10s now. So, And that is with the RTX settings all the way up with global illumination. Let's turn illumination off, see what it does. Looks like Illumination maybe gives you a few more frames per second. But yeah. It's actually doing not too bad. 18. 19 FPS, something around there. And we just dropped down on a brand new Beachhead Recon. And we are getting about 64 to 70 FPS. I've seen 70 once. It's dipping down a little bit as we walk around, but it's a decent... 40 to 50 some FPS. And we'll try with RTX now. And with everything on RTX and DLS set to quality and on, it looks like we're getting about 37 FPS here on Be Beachhead Recon. Getting about 30 FPS here now. Not too bad. And this is on RTX, full graphics. So we're also going to go ahead and test dedicated servers. So by the way, we have two dedicated servers if you're interested in playing on. We have one for East and West Coast. 
And the password is in our Discord, which is linked in the description down below and then on the main page of the channel. Join it, read the server rules, and then contact a moderator for the password. And servers are free to use for anyone that have a password. So we're going to load up our dedicated East server here, since we're on the East Coast. And we're going to start up a new beachhead. So it may be going to somewhere around 50 to 60 some, 65 FPS. I've seen it dip down to 40, but come back up to around the 50s, like it is right now, and then the 60s again. 60 some FPS, and this is on a dedicated server. So you do get better performance, it seems like, with dedicated server. And this is also DirectX 11. And now that we have our RTX on, and in the same area, it looks like we're getting about 20 to 30 FPS on RTX. And it's actually playing quite smooth. There's a lot of games out there also that uses RTX and I have no problems at all playing 60 to 100 FPS on those. So it still needs work, that's for sure. But is it an improvement? Yes. Does it still need work? Yes. Are they going in the right direction? I believe so. And it's still a beautiful game, as you can see there. Look at that. It's absolutely gorgeous. And the best graphics that I can give you guys right there. Possible. RTX. Full epic settings. Yeah. And of course, this is a fresh map. I think the larger the maps are, you'll not have as good as results as we are right now. And that's to be expected because the more you build, the more it lags the game. So, but yeah, it's not bad at all. And they're going to give us some information on the Galileo progress. This week's progress on Galileo has been focused on their bestiary reward, connecting progress to the reward so they are correctly granted to players. They also spent time working on various UI elements related to those milestones, and the system is making steady progress towards a viable test project. They've also added five other different ways to gather information about creatures, so there's a variation of the available milestones rather than just pure hunting totals which is pretty neat and this week we got the change log for 3.0 so in this section they have optimization and optimization is all the things that they had previously listed above and you can take a look at it right there and the fix section this week looks like there was a problem with Amazon guys their audio is now fixed and that looks like that's it for fixed and we have the future content section this week. Adding heat maps for Olympus and Styx for the different fish spawn locations. And creating spawn zones based on each heat map. And also they're hooking up new Olympus and Styx fishing spawn heat maps to their respective terrains. Looks like the rock dog's gonna vomit. Setting up rhubarb. Kumara? I think it's Kumara. Avocado and strawberry data tables for items, growth states, rewards, so they can now be grown when acquired. So you'll be able to grow rhubarb, kamara, avocados, and strawberries in the future. And that looks like that's it for this changelog. Thank you so much to Wolfie, Sergio, and KHX for being Thank YouTube you. members and for supporting the channel. Thank you guys so much. And guys, that's it for this video. Don't forget, if you like what you see, to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. And don't forget to ring the bell, get notifications when we release new Icarus update videos like this or content videos. And don't forget to watch another video if you're interested. There's tons of playlists for you to binge on. And hopefully, we'll see you next time. Peace.